Hello and welcome to the second part of the tutorials where we are going to look into uh, Conway's Game of Life um, and how we could create structures like these by, by using the same logic as, uh, as is used in Game of Life. Um, you can read more about it on Wikipedia and so on, but uh, I'll just cover the basic uh, principles behind it during uh, this tutorial um, and for the next step for the next tutorial that we're going to do after this uh, we're going to look into how we can merge um, this kind of um, cellular automata uh, creations uh, things like these with um, the structures the minimal triply periodic minimal surfaces that we've created during the first tutorial so if you haven't watched that, I, I, I suggest you do. Um, so to start with, I'll just open up yeah, um, Rhino <coughs> and Grasshopper. Um, and okay, so Conway's Game of Life works uh, in a very s simple fashion. First of all, it's two dimensional, right? Um, and you can think of it as a grid system where every cell in the grid is either alive or dead, right? Um, and there are these simple rules, in this case, four rules um, that um, simulate the system into the next iteration, right? So um, according to these rules, the, um, the cells or yeah, the grid cells either die or get born. Um, and of course, we'll see how we can bend these rules and how we can change them to um, get the structures that we want. Um, but for now, I would just definitely suggest you read up on the game of life to actually understand what's you know what's going on and what we're trying to achieve. Um, so the first thing is that the game of life is two dimensional, right? Um, you can kind of translate it into three dimensions, but um, it would be really chaotic. Um, so the way, um, at least I see it, the way we do it, we'll do it is um, we'll get the three dimensions by uh, reading the height as the time, right? So each frame, let's say animation like this, right? each frame of this animation is going to be stacked in Z direction to uh, to get this kind of a uh, structure, right? And later on, um, we are going to mesh, uh, mesh this kind of structure with marching cubes algorithm, but I'll, I'll explain uh, more about it as we, um, as we, uh, as we use it. <coughs> So to start with, um, we need some sort of environment to play this game in, right? So we, we need a grid. Um, there are different ways of how you can make a grid in Grasshopper. Um, there are different grids that you can make in Grasshopper as well. But the one that I find most useful or fastest uh, is just constructing a bunch of points uh, with series of numbers, right? Um, so if I were to create a um, construct point construct point right by default uh, the construct point uh, command creates a point at zero 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 coordinates right XYZ zero 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 um, if I want to make more than one point with this node I need to input more than one number in either one of these coordinates right so if I were to uh, if I were creating series uh, of numbers, right? By default, it's um, generating numbers from zero until nine, so 10 numbers in total. And just looking at the inputs, uh, the first one is the number from which we start uh, generating the numbers, right? So it's zero. Uh, second one is the step. Uh, so in this case, it's one, two, three, and so on. So the step size is one. And the uh, last one, the last input is count. How many numbers are we creating? So by default, it's 10. 
I'm going to change these to so okay we start at zero but our step size is actually you know how big of a cell do I want so let's go for uh, 10 our step size is 10 All right so I get 10 0 10 20 30 40 blah 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 um, and then the count so how many numbers do I want let's say 15 yeah something like that right so if I plug this into X input I get uh, 15 uh, 15 points right um, let me just plug in the, the, the another panel to the point output so that you can see what's going on right um, so Y and Z stayed zero while X is changing right uh, so we have uh, 15 points uh, but if I want a grid I also need to plug this into the Y value the problem is if I do that it's going to interpolate the values right so I'm gonna going to have 0 0 0 10 10 0 20 20 0 30 30 0 and so on um, so I'm going to have this diagonal line of still um, of still uh, 15 points uh, to fix this what I need to do is I need to have uh, different data branches right for each row um, the way to achieve this is by simply right clicking on the X mark um, and choosing to graft it right so suddenly I, I have a grid once once I've grafted the X input and each basically you can think of it this way um, each zero each each x zero gets uh, 15 y values right each x 10 gets 15 y values and so on right so in, in this regard we're <clears throat> basically creating a data structure which has branches so this is the first branch right this is the second branch and this is basically the first element of the first branch this is the third element of the second branch and so on um, and you can see it here um, first element of first branch third element or rather fourth element of the second branch <clears throat> okay so we have a grid um, and now we need to kind of have um, some sort of logic of um, some sort of starting logic of the points right so you can't have an empty space you know if, if you have a empty starting condition of this game of life um, it's not going to do anything right so you kind of need some points to be alive and some points to be dead in this case um, what I'm going to say is that the points that are alive are going to have a value of 1 the points that are dead are going to have a value of 0 um, I'm doing this because ones and zeros uh, directly translate to uh, true or false statements so 1 is true 0 is false and we will need to use true false statements later on so might as well stick to zeros and ones um, the way we are going to do this is um, I'm going to go here to layers and Rhino to layers tab and I'm just going to change the the name of the first layer to let's say active or alive doesn't matter um, I'm just gonna stick with active <clears throat> and I'm going to make this my uh, active layer uh, my current layer and I'm going to draw a few rectangles here and maybe here and so on so the logic is points which are inside of these rectangles are going to be alive the ones that are outside of these rectangles are going to be dead and that's going to be my starting condition um how can we do this so first of all um i'm going to reference in the curves that i drew crv 
right click, set multiple curves, reference those in. So I have them here. And then I'm going to ask, are these points inside of these curves, right? Is it, is it inside or outside or is it coincident? Um, so if I go to curve analysis, point in curves, uh, then I can input the points that I'm checking, right? And the curves that I'm checking the points against, these guys here. And then I get relationships, right? So zero is outside, one is inside, and uh, sorry, one is coincident, uh, and two is inside. Um, but I only need either zero or one, right? <clears throat> I'm not. I don't care about one. Uh, I I don't care about the coincident ones. So there are different ways of how we can do this. Um, the 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 thing that I'm going to use is. Um, let's think of it this way. If I have <clears throat> a number 0 0.5, right? And I run it through a node called integer, like so. And I have a, I check the output, I get zero, right? That, you know, that's, that, that's kind of weird, uh, but, but it, it works like that. Um, if I have a, one, it's going to give me one, 0 0.91, right? And 0 0.4 is go going to give me zero. Um, so if I were to take these numbers here, right, which are either 0, 1, or 2, right, or 2, uh, if I were to divide them by 2, What I'm going to get is either 0, 0 0.5, or 1, right? So then if I were to run the, the, the output through an integer node, what I'm going to get from here is either 0 or 1, right? Because um, here, uh, 0 0.5 becomes 0, 0 stays 0, and one stays one, right? So here I only have either zeros or ones. I can kind of um, show it to you by uh, using the text tag 3D. That's my location. The points are my locations where I want to display the text and the text is my numbers. And I'll just give it a size of, uh, let's go for a five. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see here that I have ones uh, which are inside and zeros that are outside. If I were to move the curves around or change their locations, it's you know it's gonna work. Um, if the curves overlap, it's still you know it's not gonna complain. It's still going to work. Uh, it's go gonna work fine. So. Now the issue is that, you know, w once we start experimenting with um, these curves, I will be adding and removing and so on um, some curves from, from this list, right? So I kind of want to automate it a little bit, right? So I want the curves that are inside of this, um, inside of this layer, uh, inside of this active layer to be read automatically every time I press a button or something. Um, I can do that by using a plugin called Lunchbox and going into Workflow tab and uh, using Layer Reference uh, node, right? So the Layer Reference node has a toggle and a layer. So a toggle, I'll just use a button for it. And the layer name, I'm just in, in, a, in a panel, I'm just going to write active because that's the layer that I'm using uh, in Rhino. Active, plug that one in, right? Something like that. Let's check in the panel, no. Every time I press the button, you know, you, you, you saw that once I've when I'm pressing, while I'm pressing the button, uh, it, it's giving me uh, the four, 
four curves as I release the button is giving me a null and that's because the logic of the button is uh, flipped so if I were to simply right click on the toggle and invert it now every time I click the button it's going to recalculate right it's going to um, check new positions of the curves right or add or remove curves from the list so um, just give you guys an idea uh, let's see right now I have four polyline curves right these guys here uh, if I were to remove one of them this is still four polylines right that's because I haven't updated it yet if I click it it recalculates three polyline curves right so that's how it works it re-references um, geometry from the list uh, sorry from the layer um, and this is a very useful tool to have Right. The, the drawback is that now every time I move it, I need to remember to actually, you know, re, um, recalculate or re-reference um, the layer. Okay, so we have this, uh, this thing set up, right? We, we have our starting, starting condition, and now we need to start playing the, um, let's go for the first iteration of the game of life. Um, the way we're going to do it is, uh, let me just go here and I'll just copy in the, the, the rules of the game into Grasshopper. <clears throat> I'll just create a panel, copy paste, boom, there we go. Okay, um, any life cell, so these nodes uh, or these uh, points, grid cells, are, are called cells, with fewer than two life neighbors dies, as if, it, uh, as if by uh, underpopulation, right? Uh, any life cell with two or three life neighbors lives on to the next generation, any life cell with more than three uh, live neighbors dies as if by overpopulation any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction okay so the logic is um, that each number each um, point here needs to know uh, how many alive cells are around it right so if, if, if we have, um, let's say this guy here, this point right here, right? It actually has uh, eight neighbors, right? These three, these three, whoa, it's lagging pretty bad. Uh, these three and um, this and this, right? So it has uh, eight neighbors. Points that are around the edge uh, also have three, uh, eight neighbors. Sorry. Um, let's say this guy, this point right here. This is its neighbor. This and this. Okay, that's logical. Uh, but also, um, the list, the point list or the grid is wrapped, and that means that it's infinite in a sense that this point and this point is also its neighbor right this point and this point are also its neighbors and this point is also its neighbor wait uh one two three four five six seven eight yes that's correct um, so the way it works is if it needs to jump outside of the, um, of the grid to check for its neighbors, then it jumps to the end of the grid, right? Or, or the start of the grid, depending on, on which side you are at, right? So, um, 
basically it counts like 0, one, uh, zero plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 2, 2 plus, two, uh, two plus 1 is 3 and so on. So it, it keeps on going. But as it reaches, in this case, uh, 15, 15 plus 1 is 0 again, right? Or 0 minus 1 is 15. So this is called a wrapped uh, wrapped grid, right? It's uh, by definition it's infinite. Also, I don't like the preview of of these uh, points. I'm just going to create a, a a circle around each of them, and I'm going to grab um, let's see a step divided by or Let's multiply it by 0.3 or something like that. Yeah. A bit nicer. Go. This is just a, a visual thing. Don't worry about it. Okay. So now um, I'm just going to remove these for now. Um, so the, the, the points that are inside of the, uh, the rectangles are read as alive, while the points that are outside of the rectangles are read as uh, dead, right? Uh, to start playing the game, we need to each point um, to know uh, its eight neighbors, right? And then we need to add, because all four rules deal with how many neighbors it has. So each point needs to know how many alive neighbors it has. And according to that, it needs to then uh, either uh, stay alive or become alive, uh, be born or die, right? So let's begin. Um, what we have here is we have a two dimensional um, not to the yeah two dimensional grid of numbers right of values of zero or one um so to get and these values are separated into branches right the ones that i've showed before uh to get the value let's say let's choose one point right let's say this guy right here this point right here um it belongs to this branch, which is branch uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's branch 8, and it's point uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 8, 9. So the actual coordinates of, uh, of, of this point is um, 8, 9, right? So the way we extract this neighbor the easiest way is to extract this neighbor and this neighbor, right? So these two is by actually just um, shifting the list, right? Shifting the list up by one and shifting the list down by one. Um, so if I were, um, let me just say number. So that's a number and a number again. Later on, I'm going to um, break them here right um so i'm just creating these like empty containers here uh to keep things clean um so now we need to shift the list uh if i were to just to use shift list right and uh, by default it's sh uh, the shift offset is uh, one i'm going to get this point right here right so we're dealing with uh we're calculating neighbors around this one and uh, I'm, I'm going to get this point right here because I'm shifting the list up by one. To get uh, this point right here, this neighbor right here, all I need to do is copy and instead of using one, I need to use the shift offset of minus one, right? So then I'm going to get the neighbor here, th this one. Right. Um, so that's the easy part. Uh, a bit more difficult is how to get um, the, 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 the points that are in other branches, because while this is branch 
uh, 8 uh, this is branch 9 right and this is branch uh, uh, <laughs> 7 math is hard uh, branch, se uh, branch 7 um, so to, to actually get into these branches we need to um, shift the list of of branches right first of all uh, the thing that we're going to use right is called uh, tree branch so this guy right here uh, gives us a branch of any data tree that we want right so from this one I can extract the, uh, the, the, the branch 8 by just I think this will work no this won't work uh, path 8 doesn't exist why Oh, because it's all messed up, uh, we can clean it by simpl simplifying the, the, the input. Okay, so I get uh, branch uh, 8. And it's kind of hard to, to, to see it because these are numbers, right? So there is no real preview of them. Um, let me sh show it to you with the simplify, uh, show it to you with the points. So this is branch 8, right? That's branch 9, and that's branch 7, right? So what I need is I need for each branch, I need to have a plus 1 to it and minus 1 to it. Um, to, to get, you know, for, let's say if in this uh, particular example, I'm using branch 8, so I need branch 7 and branch 9, but if I was talking about branch 10, then I would need branch 9 and branch uh, 11. Um, to do that, first of all, I need all of the paths, right? So I, I need to, yeah, and also I'm, I'm, I'm using the numbers here um, as, as my T input. Um, so I need all of the paths that I have in this data tree. I can get them by using three statistics to that and if I were to check the paths with a panel like that it gives me the addresses to all of the different branches right and then all, all I need to do is simply shift them the, in the same manner as I'm shifting the list right because this is a list of paths. So I'm just going to borrow these two guys here. I'm going to copy them and paste, right? And I'm going to plug in the path uh, output to the L input here and L input here, right? So let me just move this away. I'll just clean it up a little bit like that. Um, so here, shift uh, I, I have my paths and I sh I'm shifting them by one uh, what I'm gonna see is you know all of the paths got, got shifted by one so eight gets path nine right um, and that's exactly what I want right so I'm, I'm getting this this branch right here um, and this one shifts them by minus one, right? So eight gets a path seven, and that's this guy right here. Um, I'm going to work with them separately, right? So first of all, with um, with this one, right? The one that's shifted by plus one, and I'm going to plug plug it in to my paths input here, like that. Um, the problem right now is um, that even though I'm shifting um, the paths, mm, let me explain it with a simple example here. Let me create like three branches, uh, cat, dog, mouse, um, da, red, red, green, blue, blue, um, and let's go for one, two, three, All right, um, multi-line, 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 
um, entwine into a data tree. So these are separate branches, right? Um, the way it shows up is like so, right? Um, a data tree with three branches, uh, three items in each branch, right? Um, if I were to um, use this kind of a logic of shifting the paths and so on, what I what I'm expecting to see is let let let's say um, three statistics, three statistics. I have my paths here, right? I'm shifting them just as I did with uh, the actual work that we're doing. Mm, I'm shifting them by one, right? So one, two, zero. And then uh, I'm using the tree uh, branch to extract um, branches here. So what I would expect from this right now is to get red, green, blue at the start, then to get, um, yeah, one, two, three as my second branch and cat mo uh, dog mouse as my third branch. But actually what I'm going to get is the same thing. Cat, dog, mouse, red, green, blue, one, two, three, right? Um, the way, why it's uh, working like that is because it's trying to be smart, right? Uh, this maintain uh, option here is trying to keep the logic as it was. If I were to right click and say, uh, and, and click on uh, the tick mark next to maintain paths, like that, is going to change to renumber. And now the logic is exactly the, the, the one that I would expect, right? By shifting the paths. Uh, red, green, blue goes into start. One, two, three goes instead of red, green, blue, and cat, dog, mouse uh, loops around and goes in the back, right? So in the same logic, I'm going to right click here and disable maintain paths, right? Um, so this way, now I'm definitely getting for my, this point, I'm getting this point here, right? This is my neighbor because I've just jumped to the next branch, right? Um, I'm just going to say, okay, so this is neighbor one, this is neighbor two, um, this is going to be my, I'm just gonna create a number container, neighbor three, so this is my neighbor three. Um, so now neighbor four and neighbor five is basically staying in the same branch, right? Staying in branch nine and jumping uh, or rather shifting the list of that branch by plus one and by minus one, right? So again, I'm just going to copy these two guys, copy paste, place it, place them somewhere here. Branch goes in here, branch goes in here. So this is my shifted list upwards and that's my shifted list downwards right so now i have my top bottom uh, branch nine top branch nine bottom branch nine middle right um for branch seven it's absolutely the same thing right um i have my shift list i have my um, tree branch, which I get from, from here. So I'm shifting it backwards. I'm not maintaining paths. I'm renumbering. I can simplify it just to keep things clean. I, I will need to simplify them again. Uh, but you know, uh, might as well. And then I need to shift, get the actual uh, point and shift uh, to the other direction to get, you know, the shifted point, the actual point and the shifted point in the other direction. 
So I'm just going to copy these, paste them here, like so. Plug in, plug in, plug in. So now what I have is I have all eight neighbors, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have I have all eight neighbors here that I can um, merge into you know one list. So every point then will will have um, all of the neighbors present uh, presented to it. Right in this case, I'm, I'm using this guy. Um, let me switch this around. I'm just going to delete it, delete this. Now it's here. And let's say, you know, let's say let's say this guy is alive and let's say these two guys are alive, right? I'm not going to use this one for now. And I'm checking this point here, right? Um so the way it's going to work, somehow this point needs to get an answer three, right? Because it's that the question that we're asking is how many alive neighbors does each of these points have, right? And this guy should have three alive neighbors. So to actually do this, uh, what we need to do is we need to first of all, merge all of these neighbors into one list, right? Uh, so I'm going to use a tool called merge. And I'm going to plug in the first one, the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth, seventh, and eighth one, right? So I have all eight neighbors here. The problem is that the output that I'm going to get, if I were to hover with my mouse, is absolutely, um, I mean, maybe it's easier even to show with a data tree. It's not, it's close, but it's not good because I have, in some places I have zero, in other places I have zero comma zero values and so on. So what I need to do is actually there are two steps that I need to take. First of all, um, from here, I need the output to be only one number, right? Because right now it's giving me 15 numbers and that's because I have 15 um, elements in the branch here. But I need each of these values to be separated as and once I join them up, the output should be eight values, right? Um, to separate them, I, I will just simply graft the, the output. Um, maybe it's easier to show you with a data tree. So right now, uh, you can see that we have 15 branches, right? If I graft this, 15 branches uh, gets 15 smaller branches, right? So each element in a branch gets its own <laughs> gets its own branch, right? So it gets separated. Um, and I'm going to do this for each one of these. Because then what I get is I get eight values, eight separate values that I merge, right? Eight, eight separate values that I merge into one list right which belongs to the point around which we are checking its neighbors right um so now once i've ha i have all of these grafted i can check check here what kind of data tree am i getting and it's not a you know it's definitely not a clean one um to clean it up all i need to do is simplify the inputs Right. There are uh, definitely faster and cleaner ways to do it. 
especially uh, with scripting and I'm going to show them later on but <clears throat> um, this is the most believe it or not this is the most uh, simplest to visually uh, comprehend on what's going on so basically okay so now we have um, 225 branches with eight elements in each branch right 225 because 15 by 15 15 times 15 is 20, 225 right uh, so each point has eight values which we can check with a panel so let's say this guy here this guy here has doesn't have any alive neighbors and yes this is correct um to actually visually show you that it works i am going to jump to this guy here but first of all i need to um, activate these um, these rectangles here reference them from the layer and it's freaking out oh yeah because these points are inside of the same active layer as well i'm going to move them away to the default layer now it shouldn't complain yep so now let's see um which one was this uh zero one two three four five six seven eight branch eight zero one two three four five six seven eight nine branch eight point nine okay let's find it two 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 that's zero one two three four five six seven eight branch eight point seven branch eight point nine okay so now we can see here the first um, how can I show this to you guys easily oops oh no I lost it oh there we go okay uh, let me just move this back here um, neighbor uh, the first neighbor is zero right and this this was the first neighbor right so this guy here is zero second neighbor is one it means that it's alive and this was this was our second neighbor this guy here and it it is indeed alive right because it's inside of this rectangle uh, third neighbor shifted this guy is alive fourth neighbor dead fifth neighbor this guy alive and other all other neighbors are dead right so we know that this works great how do we calculate uh, how many alive neighbors there are well if it's if the number is uh, sorry if the node is alive it gives you a number one if the node is dead it gives you number zero so all we need to do is use mass addition and get the result right uh, so basically it adds up one 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 and then zero 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 and gets the answer three right um and then we don't need uh to have this um intense data structure anymore we need to go back to our um, 15 branches right to these 15 branches instead of 225 branches uh, so the way we are going to do this is we're going to use trim tree which basically just merges the outermost branches of the data tree back into a single branch and we'll get you know the, the first uh, branch of this grid doesn't have any neighbors and I assume yeah branch 7 will start having having like two neighbors in point uh, 7 and point 8 okay so I don't need these points anymore and these were just 
This guy was just an example. Uh, the logic up was applied to each individual point here. Um, so we have this, right? We have these answers. And now we need to, according to these rules, we need to change the logic of these points to be either alive or dead, right? Uh, so now I'm going to say that, okay, any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if by underpopulation. Okay, so I'm going to create a rule set for when the cell dies, right? So it's either, oops, Oh, come on. Okay. It's either this part or this part. No, sorry. More than three live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. So, underpopulation and overpopulation. Okay. Let's ask is the number of neighbors that we're getting? larger or smaller yeah smaller than um two right and if it's smaller than two i'm going to get true or false statements right um any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies so if it has one or zero live neighbor it dies um, and then I'm going to ask, is it larger, is the number larger than 4? Well, actually, let's say 1. So let's not use uh, smaller, or it uh, doesn't matter. We can do it like this. Two. <laughs> no, if it's larger than three then it's overpopulation right and it dies um so if either one of these answers is true the cells should die so the final answer should be true so i'm going to use a logic gate called or gate or like that and like that so if either one of these is true, the answer is going to be true. Um, and I'm going to use this as my um, def, um, def logic, right? So this is the, 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 the rule set for, for def. Um, and then there is the rule for when does a cell become alive. It's when a cell has more than three live neighbors, it becomes alive. Um, to give me a bit more uh, breathing room, I'm going to say that actually this a cell should be larger than or equal to two and it should be smaller or equal to three. So in this case, I'm going to use the logic gate and uh, what I'm doing is I'm a, a little bit breaking the rules. Uh, I'm, if I were doing this, I would be breaking the rules. Um, but I'm going to switch this to three and three for now. Um, I'm going to show you later why 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 I'm doing it this way. Um, so now, here, if this and this is true, then the answer is true. If either one of these is false, then the answer is going to be false. Um, okay, so we have our uh, birth, 
logic and our def logic here uh, rules right so now I'm going to say okay I have my let's say I have my points here where are they or let's let's use the circles and I'm going to say okay the, the first um, step right is to, to to remove all of the dead circles right so I'm going to say call with a pattern list right um, and we are calling for now with um, let's say this pattern right and of course we're left with the cells, cells that are alive and then we calculated all of the neighbors of these alive cells and so on actually neighbors of all of the cells and we have our like step two um, of, of this like next time frame iteration um, of this uh, simulation so I'm going to say okay from this grid actually I'm going I, I, I want to check whether or not the cells die right I can see here that quite a few die um, let's see here I assume yeah I guess it's 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 much better to start using a loop to actually go through multiple steps at the same time um, so now be before we actually check the culling because it, it, it might uh, become re very tedious to do I'm going to create a loop and we're going to do it with um, a plugin called Anemone and I'm going to use loop start and loop end right we need to connect the two, the start and the end, like so. Uh, we have how many times do we want to repeat it? In this case, I'm just going to choose like five for now. Don't go overboard with this number. Uh, if you plug in something bad, it's going to probably break. Uh, and then uh, um, I'm going to use a button to trigger the loop to start. And okay. Uh, let's see our d0 input so what's the data to loop um, our d0 input is probably going to be our grid right so our points I'm gonna plug those in here so that's our d0 and the points come out here something happens to them they get fed in back into d0 they loop around and it keeps recalculating um i'm just going to say uh, grid 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 okay i will need to loop more things than just the grid so i'm going to add insert parameter here like that it's gonna start complaining immediately because here we have uh, two inputs while here we have only one so I'm gonna add a parameter here as well and I'm going to say okay so for each point of the grid we have a value so I'm going to say um, values or zero or zero or one zero or one zero or one and I'm going to plug in um, as my first step uh, that the values that I get by asking if the points are inside of the curves right so those are my values as my first step anything that happens uh, after the first step is going to go through this logic of checking the neighbors and asking the, the the rule questions right the game of life rules um so i'm going to do it this way 
the, the the values come in here but just for the first iteration and then they get start being changed over and over again uh, for the next iterations um, so now uh, we need to actually change those values right um, I'm going to say the ones that are, we have a bunch of values here, right? And let's say we're at the step zero, right? So a number comes in here and um, a, a list of values we have here. And I'm just going to say number, just to keep things, things clean, I'm going to drag it here, somewhere here. So we have a, 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 a value for each point, right? And according to how many numbers that point has, the value is either going to change to zero, change to one, or not change at all, right? Um, so first of all, uh, let's change values that, that the points that are dying, that are going to be dead in the next step, let's change them to zero, right? And we have our, um, our, our, our function to change them here, or rather uh, true or false statements to change them here. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to switch this to dead. And this is uh, birth alive. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a node called filter. Hmm. No, sorry. I'm rather going to use a node called uh, pick and choose. Pick and choose. Um, according to this pattern. Uh, the, the way this node works is if you have a panel and you have, uh, let's go for zero, one, one. Uh, easier to understand if I just write it false, true true, false, false. Let's say something like this, like that, and we have um, cat, 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 cat. And then here we have dog, 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 dog. Um, the way this works is according to it, if either it's true or false, it's going to choose from this list or from this list, right? So false chooses a cat, so it chooses from input zero, while true chooses a dog, chooses from input one. We can use this logic, right? By using pick and choose. And if this is true, you know, if it should die, then it should, then it's going to choose from input one. If it shouldn't die, then it should, um, you know, stay alive. So it should uh, keep, um, keep its original, um, how do you call it? For the lack of better word, uh, to keep its original position, right? It, its original value. And that's why I have these uh, values present here. So if it's not dying, it chooses from zero. So it's getting values from here. If it's dying, its value becomes zero, um, right? The problem is that if I plug in zero here, it's going to say input stream too short, right? Because it needs more than one zero, right? It, if I were to say, let's say we have five uh, true or false statements, we have five cats, and we only have four dogs. Oh, it actually works. Hmm. Oops. There we go. If we don't have enough dogs to uh, work with the false true or false statements that we get 
it's going to start giving us a null and it's going to say input string too short. Um, the way we can fix this is by simply uh, taking a number, zero in this case, because zero is dead, right? Zero, and repeating it, repeat data, repeating it as many times as we need, right? So um, 15 times 15. Uh, I'm just going to measure the list length, list length, to get the number, uh, act, or rather not a single number, but multiple numbers, 15, 15, 15, 15 times, uh, to basically just fill up the same data tree with only only zeros, right? And then we can use this to choose from. Like that. Um, so now the the, the logic of, uh, not, not the logic, but the dead portion of the definition is done. And now for the life portion, it's absolutely the same thing, right? So we have our initial positions, initial values. Uh, some of them got turned to zero because of either uh, underpopulation or overpopulation. And now some of them need to be born, right? Uh, if it has exactly three neighbors. So I'm going to say uh, pick and choose again. Pick and choose. Like so. The pattern that we're using is our birth alive pattern here. Uh, zero input is not going to be our input, uh, our original input, but it's rather going to be uh, our input after we calculate the dying part, like so. And our one input is going to be absolutely the same thing uh, as we did here, only with zero changed to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste this, drag it over here, plug it in like so, and change this to one, right? And this is our final result, right? This is our final uh, value, values, according to the neighbors, blah, 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 uh, after the first iteration, right? So mo most of these have died, some of them stayed alive. I assume it's this portion right here. Um, so now I'm going to say that these are actually the new values that should be um, plugged into the end of the loop, transferred to the start, and then recalculated as many times as I want them to be recalculated. Um, as far as the grid goes, I'm going to, for now, I'm not going to move them upwards. We're going to do that in the next tutorial. Uh, for now, we're going to stay in 2D. So I'm going to say in this grid, right? So we have a grid here. Um, actually, I'm just going to make it into a closed loop like so. Yeah, uh, we're going to, to do some more things with the grid later. But for now, I'm just doing this. Um, and also for each step of the grid, I'm going to cull um, cull the grid points with the values that I get right uh, from here after doing the dead check and the alive check. So only these stay alive af after the first iteration. Um, and then uh, just to make it um, so that it's easier to see, I'm just going to make it a bit shinier. Oops. 
that's the wrong input that's the point cloud display uh, it's just a visual thing um, like that let me let me just disable everything and enable preview of the circles and now let's see if the game of life actually works the one that we've uh, done here because now we're done with the two-dimensional version of it um, don't need that um, like that so let's draw <laughs> let's see here okay so this is a blinker an oscillator um, let's see if this will behave in precisely this manner um, so what we need is we need let's say these three um, the, the, these uh, three nodes here let me toggle this and this is its next step right so its original step is this this is its next step um, and if I were to repeat it okay great so that works it blinks um, let's see if we can make something uh, fancier because this is kind of you know kind of boring um, a glider right so we have uh, one two three one upwards and one to the side so we have one two three one upwards and one to the side so that's a that's what's called a glider um, if I were to reference this in okay that works uh, let's give it a bit more repetitions something like 500 like that and you can see how it loops around right so as it reaches the end it will just go through the space as as if it was infinite um, it's very very slow um, and it's basically it's slow because where was it mm. It's mostly slow because of um, the anemone loop. Something's weird about it. I'm I'm not sure what. Uh, but but anemone loop is not the the, the fastest way to do it. Um, the way you can kind of um, speed it up is by either scripting or using octopus loop. But for for uh, the things that we're doing here, I, I, I believe this is completely fine. And also, just to fix the, let me just flatten this to, to make it nice. Um, okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, just before we finish, I'm, I'm going to group things up and clean it, uh, clean it up uh, before we're going to move into three dimensions and meshing and stuff like that so i'm just going to say um to start grouping it um this whole portion here is a great uh, grid right so that's a grid spacing um and that's um, x y amount right if i were to change this to like 10 oops 10 was a bit too too little um pum, pum, pum. let me just put it somewhere here something like that there we go you can see that it become smaller uh, grid spacing absolutely same thing um, you know uh, the, the, the step size between the grid cells right now it's 10 units um, so here we have reference uh, the curves and check for inclusion and create a, a, 
uh, uh, integer number out of them. So I'm just going to call them um, create first step of the game. And this one, this whole portion here, mm -hmm. well, might as well t take this one and this one here as well. Uh, group it. Let me just uh, wait. I'll just stop the simulation for now. Um, this this whole portion here is check neighbors basically check how many neighbors <coughs> each cell has this one here is um, die live or stay alive right so th this portion here is according to how many neighbors you have uh, according to how many neighbors each cell has it either dies it stays alive or it becomes alive uh, oh by the way um, even though there should be something about explosive growth um, yeah um, there should be no explosive growth right so one of the, the the statements of the game of life there should not be any expo explosive growth but in our case we don't care so we might want to say that actually the the points or not the points but the, the cells that have two or three neighbors uh, become alive right so that uh, will work as well oh, this is really fast right um, so this is what's called an explosive growth it still uh, kind of works because uh, stuff is dying because of overpopulation but if I were to change this to let's say five or six or eight it just basically uh, almost completely fills up the whole space right so what was it? three yeah so four or more um, becomes that So there's a, like a ton of ways you can play this, this this game. For now, I'm going to stick to the original Game of Life rules. Um, right. So we have that. And then in this case, this is just uh, kind of a temporary um, preview alive points of each iteration. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, for now, this this is we, we're done. Um, the next tutorial that we're going to have is going to be actually taking this uh, game of life and um, stacking it in uh, Z direction and uh, generating uh, by by the use of marching cubes algorithm uh, generating these kind of uh, intricate uh, cellular structures. Right, uh, but that's going to be in the next next tutorial. Uh, bye.